picture I showed you before, this was taken on an iPhone 7 Plus. The Earth is a very small stage, the only home we've ever known. Additional equipment? So have you ever wondered about those shot on iPhone commercials or about any of those shot on any smartphone commercials? Are those clips actually shot on smartphones? Well, the answer is technically Yes, but often with some heavy adaptation. A lot of times you can get a perfect shot out of a smartphone with just the camera handheld in perfect conditions, no problem, but that's pretty rare and you can often guarantee a much better shot if you have a little gear with you. So take this example of a video shot entirely on phones. Some of the shots are literally just a smartphone, so a smartphone on a selfie stick, or a smartphone on a mount, no special attachment needed, but a lot of other shots get much more complicated. Smartphone on a tiny drone, smartphone on a much bigger drone, smartphone attached to a cine lens with a wireless follow focus on a gimbal attached to a motorized remote control four-wheeled skateboard, that is a lot. So at the end of the video or the commercial or whatever you're watching, you see shot on a smartphone. And the main point of those commercials is that you see that it's shot on a smartphone that you can get. It's supposed to make you feel like you can make movies just like that because you get that same smartphone. But when you see the behind the scenes of how a lot of these shots go down and how these things are made, it can actually kind of have the opposite effect. That kind of stuff is not available for 99% of us mere mortals to use, but there is, luckily for us, quite a bit of dope tech that can uh, bring a lot of that down to the consumer level and help us maximize our smartphone cameras. Smartphone cameras are obviously, for the most part, really good. They're also the most popular camera in the world at this point. And you may have heard the saying that the best camera is the one you have with you. I think that's true. But, of course, you like to take it to the next level. So for photos, obviously, the sensor and the glass on the front of it are the only permanent thing about a smartphone camera. Lens adapter systems out there exist to add another layer to that. So there's a bunch of different styles out there, clip-on versions, bumper versions, case holster versions. This one I've grown to like the most is the Moment lenses. So that's actually the new version, the Moment V2. And I've gravitated towards this one mostly because of their focus on quality. It does require a case which acts as the lens mount. And then these tiny cine lenses mount to the case to change the field of view, the focal length, and the capabilities of this camera entirely. There's an 18 millimeter lens, which is a little wider than the normal field of view. There's a super wide angle fisheye version. There's even a 10 times macro lens that can get some crazy close up shots. So this I think is pretty awesome. Now, the fact that you need a whole case to be the lens mount instead of, you know, maybe just like a little clip on accessory means you are a bit restricted. It means when you upgrade your phone, you have to get a whole new case. So that's a downside, but the benefit is the precision. So you mount the lens over the exact center of the sensor every single time. There's never any vignetting in the corners, no loss of sharpness anywhere in the frame. They're polarized lenses too. So in terms of really upping the quality game from the camera of photos, these are pretty dope. These in particular support a couple of phones, but not all of them. In fact, some I thought they would support, they don't, but they've said it's because they actually wouldn't be a precise fit or they would have some vignetting or it's not practical. So they have a couple, you can check out if they're compatible with yours. And I was never really into these before as like a cheap alternative to DSLRs, but when you think about it, that's exactly what these are. You can never really match the quality of a DSLR, that will always be better, but this will always be smaller and always be cheaper. Now for smartphone video, you add a whole nother dimension, you add movement of the camera. A big part of video is movement. And you can do a lot handheld and you can have really steady hands, but after a certain point, you're gonna have some shake you're gonna to wanna to stabilize it. So taking videos shot on smartphones to the next level means taking stabilization to the next level. And that's actually where DJI Osmo Mobile comes in. It's pretty much the standard right now as far as smartphone stabilization goes. This thing is built specifically to stabilize a smartphone camera. It has some extra controls on the handle, of course, which are nice when it connects to your phone, which can trigger to pan left and right and tilt up and down and get all kinds of cool shots. But mainly the operator gets to just point 
and shoot and start moving. And the gimbal smooths out and stabilizes all the little twitches and shakes that come from being handheld. And it works really well. And that can add a whole new dimension to videos or even live streams or whatever you decide to shoot on your phone. It's just up to you to decide how to use it. Now I found that it doesn't really handle the extra weight of also adding the moment lenses to it. Uh, so you can't use the Osmo and your phone with the lenses at the same time. You need a, a bigger gimbal that supports a little bit of a heavier payload, like something like this Zuyen Tech Crane, which is made for actual cameras, but the Gorillapod adapter let me put my phone on it. But that's just if you're feeling daring. So bottom line is all this tech exists to help you take your smartphone, photo, and video game to the next level. And of course, it's not just about the gear, it's also about the strategy and all that you know about photography and video already. I could probably make a whole separate video about just that, but the whole point is, yes, a dedicated camera, while it's bigger, will definitely do a better job every time in the quality department. That's what it's built for but your smartphone cameras will always be at your side, they'll always be smaller, and they will always be cheaper than actually going out and buying a separate camera system. So while it might not seem super practical to actually go out and be able to shoot those commercial level, crazy high-end videos that people are doing with technically smartphone sensors on crazy rigs and jibs and stuff like that, it's also a lot of fun to try to maximize what you can do with the tech that's in your pocket right now. And I feel like that's where a lot of people I tell is to start your YouTube channel with your smartphone camera. You should see my inbox. Like every day there's questions about, I have this gear and this lens, is this enough to start a YouTube channel right now? Yes, you're probably already set. If you can watch this video on something, you probably have a device that can shoot video. Just start doing it. All right, I'm gonna end this before I start ranting. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this quick one. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.